We were both so keen to leave Clark Island that we got away ahead of schedule for the first time in the whole trip. It helped that our route, which was planned around the tides, only called for a 7.40 departure. We were actually underway just after 7. It was hard to believe that we were paddling the same bank straight as the previous four days. Our pedal bearing of 190 degrees true initially pointed us towards the western end of Swan Island, but as expected the ebb tide quickly swept us off to the east. In the first hour we covered an easy 9 kilometres. Nearing Swan Island we were almost an hour ahead of schedule. We swung well inside the spreadsheet route as there was now no danger of the flood tide pushing us into any of the rips around the island. Yeah, so the flood tide must be running. After rounding Swan Island, the flood tide picked up very quickly, with some obvious visible signs in spots. We had to fight to make ground towards the coast as the current tried to sweep us past Little Muscle Row Bay. You want to do less, I reckon? You want to do less, I reckon? Yeah, we are just starting to make some ground towards the coast. And then suddenly, from the perspective of the 20 days since we left Port Welshpool for the second time, we were there. The background music to this episode is fittingly titled, We're Gonna Be OK. I like it. It fits my mood as our adventure drew to a close. There was just enough water to wash us over the sandbar into Little Muscle Row Bay. paddle strokes. 150 metres on, just past the boat ramp. And my first word on touching ground in Tasmania was... Chris. That was well done. Thanks for being the great navigator. Should have break. So well done. That was textbook stuff. Well, we did 32 and a half In. At, at an average of seven. Yeah, right. The work wasn't finished of course, there was still one last unload to do. Because we were so early, our welcoming party was still on the way. They had left Hobart around the time that Andrew and I were packing up on Clark Island. So while we're waiting for the beer and champagne to arrive, we might as well have a quick review of our paddle route. This is the only day for which I still have screenshots of the tight tech forecasts. Peak ebb of three knots at 7.30, slack water at 11 and peak flood of 3 knots at 2 p.m. The spreadsheet first estimates these critical times from published tide tables assuming that slack water occurs at high water and low water and that peak flood and ebb currents are halfway between these times. As you can see from this Swan Island tide table 
Tide Tech's predictions for our bank straight paddle are around one and a quarter hours later than the times calculated in this way. We found this to be a feature of all the major crossings with the average lag time from the relevant tide table being around three quarters of an hour. The spreadsheet was set up with a lag time that could be easily changed to tweak these times. Similarly, the peak strength of the ebb and flood currents could be fudged to match tide tech values. We used the spreadsheet to calculate waypoints only up to 12. The rest of the route was guesstimated manually on our GPS. So this shows a comparison of our calculated and paddled routes. We had learned by now to use the design route as a guide only and make adjustments depending on how things went. Hence our big cutting of the corner at Swan Island since we were well ahead of the time when the flood current was predicted to start. But now the unexpected and very much appreciated refreshments have arrived. So that's all folks. It's time to celebrate and reflect and it will be steak for tea tonight.